Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about the books I read in February. So February was kind of a unique reading month for me because I read a lot more romances than I usually do and I did read seven books and let's just get into it. I first read Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim and I rated this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars which unfortunately wasn't a 5 star read for me but I did still really enjoy this book. We're following our protagonist Shiori who is a princess of Kiara and it is revealed that she has hidden magic after she runs away from her wedding ceremony. Her stepmother recognizes that she already has this hidden magic and then she transforms her six brothers into cranes and warns Shiori not to speak of this to anyone. Now Shiori, who is forced to be a mute and cannot even write anything to anyone to communicate her situation, and she's also cursed with like a bowl on her head so she's unrecognizable, she is now navigating her way to find the answers to break this curse. So I absolutely love this book and it was super easy to imagine how the world of Kiara was with all the legends, the customs, the food, and the writing made it really Really, really accessible and easy to get into this new fantasy world. It also gave off like a fairy tale vibe. Shiori also encounters different magical creatures such as magical paper cranes as well as dragons. I did want more lore or more backstory to the dragons because they were more intriguing to me than Shiori's own magic, but I still really enjoyed the magic system. Shiori herself is really strong as the protagonist and you grow to care for her well-being. Like you want her to succeed in her journey and not fail and actually recover from the curse that she has been placed under. There is a little bit of an emphasis on the chosen one trope so that kind of made a Shiori story a little bit typical as in a YA fantasy series but it was unique in how Shiori realizes her privilege of being a royal princess and then she's kind of forced to see how her people of her kingdom actually work and live. And so that part was really helpful in me to continue to like Shiori as the chosen one. Um, another aspect of the story is the sibling relationships in this book with Shiori and her six brothers. She's really close to them and she has six brothers so she has a lot of different types of relationship with each one. So I really enjoyed that strong familial bond. There's also the arranged marriage trope which I really enjoyed. Still so then the romance that there is in this book is not the focal point of her story but we do get to see her experience like a slow burn romance. Overall with the ending it was quite satisfying but there is a cliffhanger. This is a duology so I'm really excited for the second book. Dragon's Promise, I think it's called, being released later this year. In the end, I really do recommend this book. Moving on to my next read, it's my first contemporary romance of this month, and it was The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood, and I rated this one a 4.25 out of 5 stars. So this book was so hyped up, and I've been hearing about it everywhere on Book Talk, on Instagram, on YouTube, and it did not disappoint. So we're following Olive who is a PhD student and she's working in an academic setting and she's trying to work on her cancer research in a lab. And Olive finds herself in a fake dating situation with a young hotshot professor, Adam Carlson, and it's all to convince her best friend Ann that she is dating. Adam is surprisingly agreeable to this fake dating situation and he goes along with the charade. He's very supportive of her work at a conference, even though he asks like an arrogant prick to everyone else. So the buildup of the romance is what kept me reading this book, and with romance contemporary books, it's either a hit or miss for me, but with this couple, their chemistry and their banter just was so much fun to read. Olive and Adam, they do have their own respective issues as one does in life, and they both learn to overcome them slowly by the end of the book. My issues with this book is about the character of Olive, of her being really quirky and awkward. <laughs> so that part of her personality 
did annoy me a little bit and there's also an aspect of sexual assault in this book so just keep that in mind if you are not comfortable about reading that at the end of the day our couple overcomes many obstacles and they made for a very entertaining relationship to read about okay so my next contemporary romance read was a brush with love by Maisie Eddings so this one was a little bit more of a disappointment for me I did rate it a 3.25 out of 5 stars at first this book sounded really fun to me because it's set in dentistry school but it just fell flat for me so we first have Harper who is waiting for a placement in a top oral surgery program and we have Dan who is a first year dental student who comes from a long line of dentists Harper doesn't really want any distractions from her career while Dan doesn't really have a passion for dentistry in the first place and this pair's attraction to each other is instantaneous so almost like instant love they start off as just friends but then they grow feelings and grow closer so it wasn't the lack of chemistry between Harper and Dan it was just kind of lackluster for me like their romance it was kind of boring for me I did enjoy how the author handled Harper's social anxiety so that was what made me keep, keep on reading was about the social anxiety part because I don't think I really read many books about that but it was done in such a way it was like respectable to the character as well as ensuring that Harper is comfortable in her romantic relationship with Dan which can increase someone's social anxiety I really liked how the author showed how Harper does grow to be more comfortable within herself and it is a struggle for her as it can be imagined and how Dan is very understanding for her throughout those situations and on the flip side we do have Dan who has his own family struggles with his uh, relationship with his mother and it was nice to read more about that and that was also explored and resolved as well even with their faults I just felt I had a hard time connecting to the characters and mainly the relationship aspect between um, Harper and Dan. I think I was kind of hoping more for like more tension and more build up instead of instant romance. So this romance book ended up only being okay for me. Okay and moving on to my next book it was a self-development book and it's Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, so this one is a self-development book so I won't say much about it and I did rate it at a 5 out of 5 stars. So Atomic Habits goes into like a step-by-step -step guideline of how to form good habits or how to break bad habits. So the author explains how you can use the power of working towards a new habit every day and contributing a change of 1% every day and that will lead you to great results. So I did really enjoy this book and I will be slowly applying what I've read through this book into my own life which will take some time so I might make a video on this later on but for now I did really enjoy this book. Anyways, moving on to my next book. So this next book was a huge one and it was House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas. This is the second book in the Crescent City series and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I did make two long videos I uploaded last week and I'll link them above for you to watch if you're interested. So there's a reading vlog with my initial thoughts and reactions to the book as well as a full in-depth discussion review video going through different character arcs and plot lines and both of those videos have non-spoiler and spoiler sections so if you have not yet watched them I do recommend you to check it out. I love the first book House of Earth and Blood and I was going into the second book I was hoping to continue my high expectations and love this one as well. So from the first book we are following our main character Bryce Quinlan. She's witty and she's quite intelligent and she gets wrapped into a murder mystery that she doesn't really want to help solve in book one. From the start of House and Sky and Breath we still have our main character Bryce and we're also following a bunch of other POVs. I won't say too much here because I did make two in-depth videos about this book but I will say that I did enjoy the continuation of existing 
relationships as well as the build-up of new platonic relationships. Sarah continues to deliver on amazing cinematic action sequences. There are also intense revelation and secrets that are unveiled. And there is the theme of finding your place in the world. And I did think it was really fun to explore new magical powers as well as magical creatures. So Crescent City is one of an urban fantasy setting and I do not usually pick up urban fantasy settings so I'm a bit picky with these types of books. This book did have a slow setup in the beginning portion but it did pay off in the latter half. The ending is also shocking and it is a cliffhanger ending so that was quite annoying but I'm really excited for what the next future books will bring. I don't know how many books will be in this series but I don't know how Sarah will resolve everything that's happening in like the end of book two in just one book in the third Crescent City book but let's see how that happens and plays out. So again if you want to hear my full thoughts on this book there is a reading vlog and a full discussion review. There's links in the description below as well as the links in the card above. Okay so this next contemporary romance read is another one that I've been hearing a lot online as well as from people in my life and it is Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. I did rate this one a 4.25 out of 5 stars. So this one was a sweet contemporary romance book that did make me tear up but not fully cry. <laughs> it's really tough for me to cry when reading books. I think with books I need sound to cry more. <laughs> like I need to hear music accompanying whatever is going on in the book. So I do tend to cry more in like movies and tv shows. But I'm um, going back to reminders of him. This Colleen Hoover book it didn't really impact me as strongly as other Colleen Hoover books that I've read but I still appreciated the story of Kenna Scotty and Ledger. It was still impactful and it and explores the story of a young woman who recently got out of jail and made a mistake and now she's trying to reconnect to her old life. So um, Kenna is the person who has been in prison for five years after making a really really bad mistake and now she's returning to town to find her young daughter and when she gets to town she runs into Ledger and into his bar but Ledger is willing to help her however their relationship has many complex layers and the complexity of their relationship and their bond just kept me reading. I love the strong emotional connection to all the characters and also how the book explores when life deals you a bad hand and when you don't have control over certain events. I really like that aspect of it. Since the book is read from both Kenna's and Ledger's point of views, it was really nice to read their romance and their tension built up from the two different perspectives. So they did have great tension as I just said as well as chemistry and you see the strengthening of their bond throughout the book. My only issue with the book was that in the beginning we get the really nice slow build up between Kenna and Ledger and then we get to like the maybe last quarter of the book and then we have such a rushed paced and ending to everything. Maybe it could have been more expanded a little bit there but in the end i was quite satisfied with how everything wrapped up so it wasn't my favorite colleen hoover book but i still really enjoyed it so the last book i did manage to squeeze into the end of february and also i did finish this book on the first of march but i'm counting it in my favorite wrap up so this one is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This is the first book in the A League of Extraordinary Women series and I did have a lot of fun reading this one since it's a historical fiction romance book and with those two genres being blended together, it was really fun to read a romance book set in a historical fiction setting. I don't usually read a lot of historical fiction books and I usually tend to watch historical fiction TV shows such as Outlander, Peaky Blinders, and uh, Bridgerton. So this book was quite a nice change of pace for me. And with the historical aspect of this book, it was a little bit difficult for me to get past the beginning portion of this book. But once you get into the romance and how everything just kicks off from there, it was really addicting for me to not even put down this book. So we are following Annabelle Archer who is attending the University of Oxford as part of the first cohort 
of female students and the deal with that is Annabelle has to be part of the women's suffrage movement as well. Annabelle's love interest is Lord Sebastian Montgomery, one of the most powerful men in England and their romance is a slow burn and it also has some bits of forbidden romance as well and it was very very fun to read about. And I think the dynamic of me watching Bridgerton, so it's like a romance historical fiction TV show, and now reading and picking up Bringing Down the Duke, it helped me have more interest in this book. I think it, this book would be a really good transition from if you enjoy romance books to pick up more historical fiction books, but for me, I don't really read many historical fiction books, but I do want to later on in the future. And I do plan to pick up the sequel to Bringing Down the Duke in March or April and I did make my TBR last week. Let's see if I actually do pick up that because there are a lot of other books I'm gonna get to first. So those were all the books I read in February and I did hope you enjoyed watching it. Give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all soon.